Yeah. So yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so I'm Aneta, and I work in the Leibniz Institute for Astrophysics in Potsdam. And uh, maybe this title is a little bit, uh, you know, promising, but uh, actually this is the direction that I am heading to. Um, and uh, this is like um, uh, ongoing war, so maybe the results are extraordinary. And so, um, of course, we already heard today, uh, so Richard was uh, mentioning a lot about waves and also Raoul about coronal holes. So we know that the um, corona is highly inhomogeneous and um, actually coronal hole is a temporary and large region uh, of relatively cool, uh, less dense plasma in the solar corona. And the average magnetic field strength, strength of coronal holes uh, lies between one and seven gauss. And uh, what is the most important that uh, those kind of features are characterized by open magnetic field lines and uh, that this, uh, the stronger solar wind originates exactly from the area of coronal holes, what is kind of um, interesting. And so we have a measurement of uh, one spe specific coronal hole um, measured uh, at the 30th of April 2021. And uh, this was measured by several uh, instruments, but uh, I will be showing you only like my part of this work. Uh, so, of course, we were interested in um, interpolation of uh, magnetic field for this feature. Uh, so, we used the uh, potential field uh, source uh, surface, uh, PFSS, um, extrapolation. But also, we wanted to uh, go to the like more closer view uh, of this region. Um, so, um, we also used uh, the uh, data uh, from HMI and derive the magnetic field components using uh, also PFSS uh, with a finite different scheme. And this was actually done by uh, one of my uh, collaborators, uh, Stefan Heinemann. Uh, so uh, we assume that the uh, potential uh, force-free magnetic field of the sun, which is uh, known to be crude approximation. Uh, so the source uh, surface was, was uh, set to 1.7 solar radii and uh, the lowest end of the values uses a 2.5 solar radii. And here I am showing you um, only the open magnetic uh, field lines uh, because otherwise it gets too messy here. And here you can have also the scaling uh, of the magnetic field. Uh, so yeah, and our coronal holes is placed uh, over here uh, so you can uh, see uh, how this looks like on the intensity image from uh, AIA uh, and uh, our extrapolation. But yeah, uh, this kind of study is, uh, was done because I was just curious uh, what kind of results we can obtain. And as you know, AIA doesn't have a possibility to measure Doppler velocities, which is kind of challenging to tell about the oscillations without uh, velocity information. Uh, but our goal is to investigate the roots of the coronal hole uh, using plasma oscillations at the different level of the solar atmosphere. So uh, we thought that maybe it would be worth to kind of normalize our data to avoid um, this kind of um, difference in intensity because Obviously, this is uh, visible in the corona, but, but using, uh, let's say, Fourier, Fourier methods, we can have a strong correlation between intensity and the uh, power spectra. So uh, we um, used uh, kind of new developed uh, time normalization to emphasize minor brightness variation in contrast between a temporal set uh, of preceding and following images. And um, what it does is measure brightness in specific spatial locations, so it's target, across temporal set. And then this temporal set is both proceeding and following images around the target image. So uh, here, the temporal set in all data uh, processed here is uh, to, uh, to be about plus minus uh, 10 images. So, um, Every pixel uh, is a temporal set uh, and is processed uh, via a um, very simple uh, formula. 
And so after this kind of normalization uh, with, with some threshold, uh, we obtained a processed signal. And I will show you how does it looks like for the uh, data. So basically we have uh, the same data. Uh, where, so on the left uh, panel is uh, original from SDOAIA at uh, 193 angstrom. And uh, on the uh, right, you have the normalized one. So basically what it does is the same data set and you can see that uh, on the left side, the motions of the plasma are pretty much visible, whereas on the uh, on the left side, we don't see really much movement in there. So we thought that maybe this could uh, give us some signal in a Fourier transform because we are interested uh, actually how does it oscillate around the sonar coronal hole and what is the distribution of oscillation, special distribution of the oscillation. So um, uh, I calculated the, um, the Fourier transform and then inverted it, uh, divided into some uh, frequency bands and inverted it back. Uh, so to get like a power maps uh, for some given frequency ranges. And uh, we can see that uh, Corona hole, even on the normalized data, when you don't have like really uh, high intensity difference between this area, uh, is still visible. So um, this uh, leads us to the idea that might be that it might be some uh, means to estimate uh, boundaries of the coronal hole, which might be then useful uh, also to my colleagues then later on in the later analysis. Uh, but I was also interested in particular oscillation. So I thought that maybe it would be worth to set up some boxes and just measuring how the plasma is behaving in in this location. So here um, again. Uh, on the left hand side, you have the original data, and on the right hand side, you have the time normalized AIA uh, and, 90, uh, uh, and 193 angstrom. We did this for also for the different uh, um, filter grams, but uh, I'm presenting here only one. So um, I did that kind of very, very simple time space plot. So just uh, we are uh, we are just um, investigating how um, the, the plasma is moving uh, over the time. And we can identify some oscillation, but this is quite not so accurate. We would have to, um, I don't know, like uh, fit some, um, make some fitting on it to, to really identify that. But there is like some more simple method to actually do it, which called uh, wavelet. And uh, this is based on the Torrance and Compo method, uh, which, was, which was published in 19, uh, 1998 already. Um, so as you can see for the original data, uh, we have uh, a lot of signal here, but uh, actually we can uh, detect uh, some kind of three to five minutes oscillation here. Um, and uh, excuse me, but this is like kind of uh, other way around, should be like this, but my DL refuse, uh, IDL refuses. <laughs> Uh, to do such a plot. So um, actually what you see these two samples are this uh, set of plot. So uh, for the or original data, you can see that we have uh, less signal and we can detect less oscillation than for the normalized one, which is kind of interesting. And here also uh, we can um, detect more st stable oscillations in this area. So uh, this what I uh, I'm showing here is with 95 percent of confidence. So um, we know that um, uh, we can identify it, um, oscillation even based on the um, uh, on the intensity the data from SDO, which is kind of uh, quite yeah surprise, but it's nice to us. Okay, so why we want to use the UCOM then uh, in the future? Uh, of course. Uh, We've heard already that uh, UCOMP uh, has a possibility um, to measure Doppler velocity and magnetic field uh, in Corona and has a large field of view um, and larger spots of special, special resolution, resolution than the COMP. Uh, but our uh, main goal is kind of um, track the long living uh, coronal hole. So if we'll be having uh, like uh, some maybe equatorial coronal hole, and maybe we can um, we can uh, observe it um, at the limb, and then kind of uh, track it over the the solar disk, and then maybe go to the to the other limb. We don't know, but this is a kind of idea how to do it. And we know we are 
quite sure that these observations can bring us more information about the propagating wa uh, date uh, waves in, um, inside, actually inside this um, kind of features. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, also um, UCOM can resolve fine structure of the plasma, which is kind of crucial in this kind of investigation. And maybe we will be also interested in a, a, a polar coronal holes. But uh, yeah, but for now, um, we wanted to track like really equatorial, equatorial long living uh, features and we'll see what it will give us. But I think that this is very nice uh, context data to our research. Yeah, and that was all. Uh, thank you very much. So, so the kernel holes seen at the limb, that's a, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. One comment, actually, can you go back to that picture? Is the one I was going to comment on but your okay. final slide? Yeah. No, no, the, your final slide. There can, on, yeah. Yeah. That one. Um, for, if it's, of course, if it's a narrow kernel hole, you're going to have so much blindness side effect that it's going to be hard yes. to see it. Yes. But like this one, you can see it's, it's also got the very wide structure above it. And so that one you will be able to see pretty well looking at. And if you look in the azimuth, you can look at the expansion. Of, mm -hmm. of the coronal hole, like the non-radial expansion of it in a way which could be quite yeah. interesting to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. We don't have a lot of signal in the that coronal hole. Yeah. Yeah. So the data are known. Yeah. It's just the line is off. It's not much better. Uh, oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, yeah. So I just wonder if you can do simultaneously with EUI at a point. Yeah, I was thinking about some um, joint uh, joint observation of taking data from different instruments. Yeah, this is also the EUI has uh, has uh, similar um, photograms as uh, AIA. So, yeah, we are thinking about to to do this, but this is like ongoing work. So we are still experimenting, and it's just like kind of we were curious what we get, you know. So, but as we know that it might can have some additional input to. Uh, to uh, to other data which we're taking for actually for this event for event this this feature so so yeah we, we will be trying everything what we have including EUI yeah um, I just curious about the oscillations in AI have you done any, any type of analysis to try to figure out if this due to heating or due to speed or <clears throat> no no not yet I mean like I did uh, in the past I did. Um, similar, um, let's say, investigation, but for the flares. But that time uh, we had actually the, the full, full scan uh, over the over the spectral line, so we could derive the Doppler velocities. So this is like, kind of tricky, you know, with AI is, is hard to say. Any questions? All right, let's <laughs>